Right. Uh, so Sadbir Chahal is part of the founding team uh, at Opsverse. Um, so uh, Sadbir, would you like to uh, you know introduce yourself and say a line or two about yourself? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, thanks. First off, thanks, Ryan. Uh, and also, I want to thank Alternity for hosting this great event, right? And also, all anyone listening in, I hope you find the next 15, 20 minutes insightful and helpful. So I'm I'm a principal engineer at Opsverse, right? And at Opsverse, we bring up, uh, you know, your favorite uh, tools, right? And we just, uh, uh, and we make it a cohesive stack. So one of the stacks is observability, and that's what we'll kind of be talking talking now. So talking about now. So Ryan, is it okay if I kind of start or should we, yes, should we please, wait a few ahead. more? Okay. Awesome. Ahead. Yeah. Ahead. You're in charge. Awesome. You're the host. So you have no issues. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Great. Okay. So, yeah. So, so today we'll be talking, or this talk we'll be talking about uh, switching the Jaeger distributed tracing storage to ClickHouse, uh, basically to enable advanced performance monitoring, right? So, so what that does is, uh, what that does is it, Actually, let me let me go. So we're gonna actually talk about why we decided to do that. Originally, we had we were going to Cassandra, and then we go to ClickHouse. And like I was saying earlier, right, Jaeger is just one component of this observability stack that our users launch. Right. So so before we go deep down into like that switch, uh, let me give a second, a few seconds here on describing what Jaeger is for those that are uninitiated. All right. So it's a Distributed tracing system, open sourced by Uber, is now part of the CNCF. I think it's hit the graduation status, right? And it basically gives visibility into the requests uh, that uh, that go in between the microservices. So we're we're in a distributed world now, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of services, Kubernetes services, and and these traces by passing a context by propagating con trace context, it's able to tie in what a where a request went and possibly find bottlenecks so so i know that's and then each each of those operations you know from service to service that's known as a span so a collection of spans compose a single trace i know that's a lot of words so let me quickly just show you in action what a trace is before we go to get into the click house so 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 this is one of our apps right in our case it's our app console.osverse.io here we've instrumented our app to emit traces right and now imagine you have your own app with the proper sdks right that are emitting traces so here if you're navigating around right re restarting clicking on a couple couple cards uh right refreshing a couple times it's what it's doing is it's going to send traces back so that if there's any bottlenecks in your system right you're going to be able to see traces kind of come back. So now this is instrumented to go to one of our uh, Jaeger backends. And so now if on our engineering side, if we go in and we kind of we kind of go ahead and look for the traces that came in, the actions that I just did, right? So if you go search, if you search for a service, we instrumented one with our API server. And if I'm searching for, let's say, for example, a get request uh, for category types, and if I run this query, I should have just done last five minutes, but basically right here, this 1304, 1305, these were probably our requests, right? Uh, uh, just a minute ago, right? And and here, here, what we're going to do is actually click on one of the traces. And I, I just wanna show you what the insights that traces give. Here you can see like there's a Postgres query connection and you can see what queries, it, uh, what queries the API went, uh, <laughs> did to the Postgres server and kind of get insights on that. Not too much insights, but top level of each trace. Notice how each trace is separate. So there's not much we're doing right now, except just showing it. So now kind of going back, right? Um, get a time check, 1306. So so going back here, right? Um, what all that did, the couple seconds of refreshes, right? That all went through this whole architecture, right? So our apps are, we have a, we're sending it to what they call an open telemetry collector. Like, look it up. It's a, it's a great standard to kind of make sure, you know, you could back into a bunch of, you could send to a bunch of backends kind of parallelly. You could test stuff, right? So open telemetry collector goes to our Jaeger collector, which goes to a buffer, which is Kafka. And then, and then we have some consumers. In this case, it's called a Jaeger ingester that puts it into a DB. Now, Jaeger by default, 
backends to Elasticsearch and uh, Cassandra by default. And we picked, uh, we basically picked Cassandra because of the operational overhead of maintaining Elasticsearch clusters. Uh, that's beyond kind of the purview of this talk, but basically we picked uh, uh, Cassandra to kind of to kind of start off with Jaeger, right? Um, hey, Sunbear, which was so, okay, uh, totally good. Sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, I, I just wanted to make sure uh, the slides are the only screen you are sharing, right? There is no other window or uh, anything else you you were trying to share because we only see share um, the slides and someone commented in the chat that um, they're not seeing the screen but the slide. So I want to make sure here. Uh, uh, did you mean to share anything else other than the, other than the slides? Uh, yeah, was actually said sharing. Let me go here. Do you guys see? Do you guys see the other screens now? I I just saw something uh, for a quick second there. This okay. is the slide that Are you guys seeing, seeing? Right now. Okay, so so you're 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 seeing your architecture now. Yep, yep. That's the slide. And now are you? Are you seeing something different now? Uh huh. Yes. Yes. We okay. See Grafana, so I think. Yes. Grafana, right? Yeah. You got it. You got it. So let me rewind just a split second then. Yep, right. I'll you. leave it here. Yeah. I'll leave it at what is Jaeger. Right. So you guys already saw, had me talk about what is Jaeger. And what I did go was to our app that we instrumented to send Jaeger traces, which is console dolls for Stio. So if you guys are still seeing this, um, you know, if you guys think another, like a web page here, please cut me off, but now I'm going to refresh a couple times and kind of click on, uh, click on a couple things. And basically then when we go to Jaeger, we see those traces, right? Those traces are actually coming in or sorry, Grafana, which, uh, uh which we're looking at and we could kind of see basic, basic trace data, like what that API service went through, like what DB calls it made and how long it took. Right. So that's basically kind of where I had left off. Right. So now what that did in the back background was send through this, what I was explaining earlier was sends through the open telemetry collector to, to the Jaeger collector, which has a buffer to Kafka, which sends to a database. Right. And Elasticsearch and Cassandra are where we went because of operational overhead. Uh, we picked Cassandra to back end to. Right. Um, so in, in the interest of time, I'm just going to kind of tell you the pros and cons, right? Cassandra was awesome. I mean, it was fine, right? It was scalable with near zero maintenance, near zero, right? Fast writes, uh, we noticed our consumer group lags during that Kafka buffer uh, phase was near zero. So it was really good. And the general, there's other general advantages which don't, which don't, uh, you know, pertain to traces per se, like, like fault tolerance and replication, but uh, it was good. But the downside we got was there's really no joins, right? Joins are rough, uh, almost impossible. Bulk querying load can be expensive, right? So bulk queries are bad. And also aggregate functions just don't really exist or they're not too complex, right? So to, for any advanced analytics on those traces that we would have had, we would have needed to actually, uh, we would have actually needed to actually create like some outside process that pulls in the data and then and then does the aggregating there. So so why did we pick ClickHouse? Kind of the crux of this talk, right? Uh, first off, it has great data compression and batch ingestion, right? Which traces are notorious, need, much needed for traces. And we also have some existing familiarity. Remember, we at Opsource, we we run a bun uh, bunch of open source tools for our customers, right? And one of them was Postog. Postog is, uh, is uses ClickHouse on the back end. So we gained a little in-house expertise with uh, ClickHouse. And also it's near... ASCII SQL compatible, right? So it's not like we have to learn a different query language, right? So on top of all those pluses, there's a rich set of aggregate functions, right? Parsing JSON, arrays, maps, and you know the standard deviation functions, all that, right? The top n percent, and its weaknesses are something that we really don't care about with traces. For example, deletes and updates are slow. That's okay because traces we're sending, so we're streaming traces out. We really don't care if. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're actually not deleting anything, right? We'll get to like retention policies later, but really things just drop off, right? TTLs. So, so going to the next part, and then here's the Kubernetes side. Depending on your background, this might be important to We run uh, a, a few things happened with ClickHouse. A few key prerequisites were were made uh, were uh, were met. First off, uh, the Jaeger project supported a gRPC storage plugin, which paved the way for the community to create plugins that kind of 
that basically allow any database as a backend as long as that plugin implements that uh, the protobuf interface right so that so fast forward to mid 2021 the jaeger clickhouse project was a uh, plugin was created right so that pre, since that pre, since that was all set we just needed a clickhouse instance to connect that plugin to the um uh, to connect that plugin to right so what we saw was that the alternative you know uh, an alternative clickhouse operator uh, was growing in popularity and that it had plenty of community uh you know uh, momentum content blogs and which allowed our team to poc and run it really quickly right so all this stuff kind of became you know key you know saying you know let's switch from cassandra to clickhouse to kind of build on those advanced uh, or to advance those the insights on those uh traces so so now kind of the steps here right really quickly i'm going to kind of say we had to swap out like here's the technical side of things right we swapped out the bitnami cassandra helm chart for the kubernetes clickhouse operator right we added the clickhouse installation which is a custom resource to our templates of deployments right of uh, you know jaeger being one of them now we have a clickhouse installation on top of everything else that goes off part of the stack and then um uh, uh, rewinding a bit we had to actually put the grpc plugin into the jaeger ingester and querier right so now that the jaeger querier when it's searching query knows how to kind of uh query cassandra and bring those bring that data back to you right and then of course we updated our helm charts um uh, to allow all that to kind of work seamlessly um some gotchas right uh Get familiar with the custom resource, the ClickHouse installation custom resource. By default, right, it's going to create a load balancer service. You don't, you may not need that, right? Cluster IP might be good enough. In our case, we're all internal. We're just internally calling or getting these traces from ClickHouse. So in that case, you know, just change the service templates around. Familiarity needed there. Um, also, by default, there's a no read-only user, right? So, so update the update the resource to actually have you know the configuration user spec to actually create a read-only user and in the same light right just uh you know you could uh limit which network siders can query right uh add the TTLs retention periods so anything after a month we drop that data for example and this space and CPU memory request limits all that depending on your load um uh another thing big one is uh you may use tools like Argo CD to 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 kind of send your send your deployments out right kind of this whole GitOps uh methodology right so so we ran into a thing where Argo CD may think it's managing an operator managed resource like a persistent volume and may try to terminate it so some thing here to keep in mind is uh with the ClickHouse installation to, uh metadata annotations right the update the templates to add like stuff like this ignore extraneous and set proven equals false so even if click or sorry even if Argo thinks hey all right nothing in git tells me there's a pv even though the operator created it let me delete it so proven equals false says don't don't really delete it right so um and all that can also be set as, as a config to the operator so so that's that um let me see so, uh, that's it so sleeping easy at night you know all that's good everything's kind of working enable your backups we took this project by Alex Akulov right uh baited a cron job made the images of a cron job so we could back up consistently and ClickHouse, of course, supports the metrics endpoints. So have Prometheus scrape it, have your dashboards and alerts, set all those, right? You de definitely have kind of the whole, the, operationaliz the operationalization side of it, right? So that you can, you don't have to worry, right? Just things will work. And if they don't, you'll be alerted. Um, and what else? Then begin querying, right? So now, because everything's going to ClickHouse, right? Uh, add that data source to your favorite tool. Uh, you guys just saw Grafana, you, all, Apache Super, a bunch of tools out there. Uh, rich functions and parsers now that you could get really cool uh, dashboards. So in this case, for example, before I was just showing you the individual traces, right? But now, right, you're going to get stuff like, you know, really cool, like P90 duration, the slowest service, right uh, all that stuff kind of comes for free basically for free because of uh clickhouse queries there's an example query right use materialized columns there are other talks that talk about material columns so refer to those so we use material column materialized columns to optimize the fetch so i know i kind of sped through there at a, kind of the final you know 50 percent, but that's kind of the the oh actually so yeah so actually we do have um 
one with the service insights, right? So now you basically go from, uh, let it refresh. You basically go from this with their traces to this with the ClickHouse queries. Um, it's refreshing right here. So you got your top 50 slow transactions by, based by service. And because this is all ClickHouse, right? It's just a SQL like ClickHouse query and you're get you're get you're you're running a bunch of data and getting good free metrics basically or insights into your metrics. So that's basically it. So sorry for the little hiccup uh, where you guys couldn't see the initial ones, right? Um, but if you guys have any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask here. Awesome, thank you, Sadbir. Uh, we still have three more minutes. If anyone has any questions, I suggest you go over to the Q&A section and type it out. I did see someone raise their hand. Uh, just to remind you, attendees do not have microphone access, so we cannot uh, pass it over to you, uh, to you to ask the question. You would have to type it out in the Q&A section. Thank you. Uh, I see some activities in chat. Uh, great talk, great, great talk, um, great. Um, yeah, people are lo loving it, uh, Sadbir. Awesome. Yeah, reach out to us. We have an open community Slack, so the whole team's there, right? So any ClickHouse type questions you guys have for this Jaeger project, you know, reach out. I, I, we couldn't be more happy with it, to be honest, right? Uh, so it's, uh, it, so it's, it's definitely worth a talk. And then those gotchas are something that really, really, you know, you want to be privy to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, really good project, really fun, uh, really good stuff. Thank yep. you. That's uh yeah that's that's great uh uh once one once again we still have two more minutes if you have any questions for Sabir please type it out in the Q and A I'll I'll give you a a minute to type it out um uh, again this is Raihan from Alternity we are the people who are um, organizing this event uh, myself and my team included and uh, again Sabir thank you for your awesome talk. Um, a couple of notes that I want to mention here is the talk is being recorded. So if anyone missed it um, or you know some of it, uh, you will be uh, you will have a chance to you know watch it later on. We'll distribute it over to YouTube or somewhere else. We'll figure it out later. But that's one thing. And the other thing is Sadbir's uh, uh, um, slides should be available to download in the um, same Zoom uh, conference interface that you joined from. That's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank everyone one once again to uh, for joining and uh, listening to us and uh, your feedback. Thank you. I guess no more que thank no you. questions. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't see any questions in the Q and A, so I think we can call it a day for today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you, Sadbir. Bye.